Welcome to A Planet Cacophony. My name's Dan Pachinello here at Skid Row Studios. And right across from me is Mr. Mac DeMarco. How's up? How you doing, man? I'm pretty good. A little fried, but I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm sure you are. You had a busy weekend. Yeah. How was FYF, man? Uh, you get a chance to see anybody? Uh, yeah. Who did I see? Saw The Strokes. Saw Kindness. Saw a little Earl Sweatshirt. A little bit of Grimes. A little bit of Phoenix. Kind of, uh... You were around a bit for the yeah, whole thing. a little bit. How was your set? It was fun, kind of crazy. It was kind of like get on the stage, sound check, play, get the hell out of here. But uh, other than that, it was great. Yeah, it's pretty pretty nuts. Awesome, man. Um, we, well, we we know here um, nothing about Canada. <laughs> what was the music scene um, like for you as a young Mac DeMarco growing up? Um, well, I grew up in a city called Edmonton, which mm -hmm. is like uh, really far north, kind of in the middle, kind of a little bit west. Um, known for I don't know, they got some oil there, some crap, and a bunch of rednecks, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was like the, the vibe is in the middle of Canada, you know, maybe a town gets some good bands. But then as soon as, you know, people start liking them, they take off to Vancouver or Toronto or Montreal. So it's kind of the way it always was. And I did it too. So there that's you go. That's the way of the world, motherfucker, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's <laughs> the way she goes. Uh, we've all had to uh, hustle for money at one point or another, but you, in a sense, sacrificed your body. Can you tell us a little bit of the medical tests uh, uh, yeah. you were a part of? Yeah, sure. Well, I did it in Montreal. It's kind of like different universities, you know, different programs need lab rats. Like sometimes, sometimes like psychology studies or other times like, I don't know, all kinds of weird crap. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, what did I do? Shot magnets in my head once. Ran no way. Yeah, well, well, let's take it one by one. Like, how did that go? I don't know. It was weird. They were like making me read these words on a screen. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it would say like, um, like theater, like 400 times. And it would blink on. You're supposed to say it. Within the magnets are supposed to like manipulate something where you read it wrong or something. I don't know. They were getting something out of it, but I was just saying theater over and over. Sounds again. like the beginning of uh, Ghostbusters with Bill Murray just zapping him. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> or Zoolander and Frankie say relax. Oh yeah. <laughs> Is that what it felt like? Uh, yeah, it just felt weird. I mean, some like you know, kid student, same age as me, but with this like giant magnet thing on like a trench coat on beside me, like keep saying it. <laughs> <laughs> that's God. That's strange. Yeah, it's kind of strange. All right, uh, you went from being relatively underground to exploding, uh, or at least we think so. Um, have you found uh, the pressure and the attention difficult at times, or how are you handling it? Um, yeah, for a while, yeah, it was pretty confusing. Um, what, but, what was the difference like in the beginning? Well, I mean, at first, because I've been doing the music thing for like a long time, probably mm -hmm. like eight, eight years or something. I mean, not that long, but I've played shows since I was like 18 or something all the time. Right. Um, so, you know, the, the jump from like, oh, now I'm on a record label in the States, now I can go play down there, yada, yada, yada. That was pretty crazy. But, I mean, it was still pretty mellow for a while. But now it's like, yeah, kind of kind of, kind of nuts. I mean, it depends on where I am and stuff. But some kids uh, go really crazy. So. Are you and going I, crazy? The what? Are you going crazy? Mm, I was, but now I'm just kind of like... You, you kind of like found yourself in the groove or... I just like have uh, given up any idea of like myself and I'm just essentially like... Uh, they can do whatever the hell they want with me and the image now. <laughs> it's all good. The dollars are rolling in. God bless the kids. You know? yeah. All right, man. I'm glad you're sitting pretty. <laughs> uh, your fans are uh, really young. They they even have this like crazy boy band reaction to you sometimes. It's uh, Is that something you can ever get used to? Or like, what's the weirdest thing a band's ever done? A uh, fan's ever done? Um, I guess I'm used to it in a way. But I mean, it's also the reason. I mean, I, I really appreciate those kids. It's like... Of course. That's the reason I go out to play the shows because it's like, oh, there's some freaks out there that are like really into what we're doing. They just want to have a good time with us. It's like, it's cool. But yeah, they do weird things a lot. Like in New York, a couple, maybe a month ago, a month and a half ago, we played a show at this like uh, music festival on the on the river. And this girl, she, I think she was 15, and she brought a present for me. And I get presents sometimes, which is really cool. But that's, this one that's, was like, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. But this one was like, uh, she was trying to go above and beyond. She gave me this uh, jar. With, filled with uh, formaldehyde or like isopropyl alcohol or something. And in the alcohol or whatever it was, there was a pig fetus. What? And on the pig fetus, she had tattooed a picture of me as a mermaid. What? Um, yeah, and she was like, here you go. And I was kind of like, okay, like, th thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so like this chick like grabbed a tat, uh, yeah, like a fetus of a pig, yeah, inked it, it, put it in some formaldehyde, and yeah, was like, this is for you, man. Pretty weird, yeah. Pretty well, did, weird. did you get that like after the show, or was it like right up on stage, like she walked up? No, and yeah, she found me after. She found my, my guitarist, Pete, and she was kind of like, uh, 
Pete came up to me too, and he was like, uh, "Hey man, uh, I think you should meet this like kid." And I was like, "Man, I'm just hanging out." She's He's got like, this jar for yeah, you. He was dude. like, "No, this one, like, yeah, I think you should come with me." I was like, <laughs> really cool. What was your reaction to that? I was kind of like, "Uh, thank you," because it's pretty weird at first, you know. It's kind of like, do you still have it? Yeah, it's in my my booking agency's office. Actually, <laughs> I so. mean, what else could you do with it? You got to put that you on the shelf, right? And at first, too, it's kind of like you know, it's like you deface this like carcass of a living thing. It's kind of crazy. But if you think about it a little bit more rationally, it's kind of like, you know, say the girl's pretty young. She's an aspiring tattoo artist. So you don't want to go ahead and just start tattooing people. No, you, you got to practice on it. something. Yes, yeah, so I you find that canvas. Yeah, and the canvas sometimes is a pig fetus carcass. Well, I, I've heard that the, the pig skin is it's close as to closest human to human skin as possible. So someday little Aoife that gave me the pig fetus will be a great tattoo artist. <laughs> awesome, Mac. Yeah. Um, we have you with an acoustic guitar here, mm -hmm. and um, you're going to play some tunes. I, I love the uh, the capo you got going with the Sharpie. Mm -hmm. Whatever works, brother. Makeshift, you know? So, um, which song did you want to do first? We're going to try Salad Days. Sounds okay? Awesome. That oh, sounds great in my headphones. Let's, I'm sure it sounds great elsewhere. Okay, cool. Um, this song is called Salad Days. Okay. That looks like that Sharpie capo ain't doing too well. Let's uh, Getting older, chip up on my shoulder, rolling through life to roll over and die. No, 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 oh, no, 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 oh, 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 Saturday days are gone, it's an hippie Remember the days just to tell them so long. Thank you. So I had a little fucking throg in my throat there, but it's all good now. <laughs> hey, cheers, brother. How's that Sharpie working out for you? It's okay. A little buzzy, but maybe it sounds... Uh, ah, it really sounds like, like we're in a studio. Exotic. Just it. Yeah. <laughs> I dig, man. Beautiful. So then, uh, the next one you're going to do is uh, Let oh, It Go? Oh, yeah. Let's try another one. Oh, I'd love it. Well, I just got to move the capo here. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, do your thing. What do we got, like a bunch of hair ties and a Sharpie? Oh, it's beautiful. Come on. Give me some love. Always forgetting my capo. I think it works better down here, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Holds on a little tighter, huh? Good enough. Right on. Let it go.
Thanks, man. No problem. Al, we're going to some songs. Let's see if we get to know you a little bit better after this. Show. Sure. Here's the Moffs. We had Kim in last week. Much respect. Back to a pine. Welcome back to a pine of cacophony. My name is Dan Pacinello, and we're sitting here at Skid Row Studios with Mac DeMarco. How you doing? Good, baby. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Th- thanks. Thanks, boo. Am I, am I loud? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course. Um, we, we heard the Muffs and Honey Chain, who's a band that uh, Kim Shattuck, who was our guest last week, is producing. I thought that was great. And then uh, Mac DeMarco doing um, Passing Out the Pieces. Mm-hmm. And we heard Salad Days and Let Her Go Live, which is, I mean, thank you. No problem. I felt like we got a little private thing going here. We'll share it with the world soon. But Tender, intimate. Yeah, Definitely. totally, totally. Yeah, something like that, yeah. So um, let's... You're, you're a talented guy, and I just cringe when people ask you shit like, why do you like hats, or will you make out with me just mm-hmm. to get you to do something crazy? Does it bother you that journalists have uh, kind of ex- exaggerated this persona? Um, I don't think it bothers me. I think it's uh, interesting and strange. Um, I think it's kind of useful, too, because people uh, often uh, assume that I'm like a complete like ignoramus moron, like, Right, Not they joke. they call it like gap tooth prankster. Yeah, like, like these like, things that are getting tossed around. He's like, like a punk slacker, like uh, you know, he sticks stuff up his ass. Which I mean, you know, they can <laughs> you're like, hey, I do that, but <laughs> I've done it before. But I mean, you know, it's it's sometimes it's nice, especially when they come in like these goofy questions. And then you can, uh, you know, if you can put together half a sentence, then they're kind of like, wait a minute, uh oh, you know, you kind of flip the switch. But I think it's also useful too, because I mean, 
Because I think people are confused about what me and my band actually are. Exactly. Maybe they stay interested for a little longer, which is... You know. Well, when, when you get the little extravagance in there? Yeah. Well, how, how would you like, uh, like the difference to be... Is there like a happy medium you'd like to meet with that? Or are you, like you're totally cool with running on that persona? Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't care what they think. They can say whatever they want. It's totally fine by me. Do you think it overshadows your music at all? Or um, like the meaning behind your songs? Probably to some people, yeah, probably. But um, once again, don't care as long as they're paying attention to me. I just want to be Michael Jackson. That's it. You know? <laughs> right on, man. Yeah. Um, you strike me as the kind of guy who's got some stories. What's the craziest thing that has happened to you on tour other, other than Pig Fetus? Um, we... Uh, we smoked a joint with Kyle Gass from Tenacious D in Brussels recently. That was interesting. Well, that's pretty badass. How'd that go? We were we were under the influence of a couple different things, so it was very, uh, very trippy. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool. Cool to meet the guy. Did you play with him? Like, did you guys share the same bill? The same festival bill, so. Right, right. Sort of. But I don't know what other weird things have happened. I don't know. It kind of just gets all blurry after a little while. Things happen. Yeah. We remember or we don't. Exactly. <laughs> right on, dude. Have you known the guys in your backing band for a long time? I'm sure um, that makes the uh, the long touring a lot easier for you or more fun. Why don't you tell us about your guys? Well, sure. We just lost a guy, Peter. He died of uh, Ebola. Oh, my God. Let's try, okay, let's sorry sorry to hear that. He's not, he's not of Ebola. Let's say, um, let's say he got hit by a bus or something. That's a little bit. Ebola's a little touchy right now, so maybe not a good one to use. But. Anyway, Pete died. Um, but we got this really handsome new young man named Andy playing the guitar. Okay, right he's, on. Um, he's got a great body. He's, like, very fit. He exercises a lot. <laughs> I can vouch for that, dude. He's, yeah. hey, he can vouch for that. I you can. saw him, yeah. He's tot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He looks good. <laughs> Loins. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have him. And I've known him for uh, maybe five, five years or something. I met him in Montreal. He's from Florida. Great guitar player. He has his own band called Ton Starts Bandit. Um, and he lives in New York with me in the same house. And then... The other two guys have been with me since the beginning. Joe is the drummer, and he's kind of like this, like, beautiful, like, Adonis-style man with, like, long, flowing, frosted locks. And um, he's got an English major, so he likes poetry, in case any of the girls are interested. Oh, um, yeah. I'm so, interested. Exactly. Yeah, boys, too. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, but, yeah, so he's the drum, kind of plays the drums like a gorilla. Love him to pieces. And then, um, and then Pierce, is, uh, he's kind of our, like... Um, what is it, a contrarian uh, kind of prankster, badass uh, bass player boy. So, yeah, good good boys, yeah. Um, yeah, I've known them forever. I don't think I could go on tour with, uh, like, hired guns. I think it would, uh, I think I would end up, like, hanging myself probably. Yeah. yeah, I was, like, thinking about that. Like, there's such a difference between, like, the hired gun route, like, studio musicians or, like, shit, I need an extra guitar or a rhythm mm -hmm. or a new drummer for this thing just because we're going to be in France this week or whatever. Like, let's see who's there that can do those dates mm -hmm. and pick up the songs quickly. I don't see that in your music as, like, uh, your go-to for solving solutions, but it, it's great that you have, like, that unit behind you, and I feel like it comes through on your records and your songs. Do you, do you track with them in the studio and everything? No, I do the tracking by myself, but, but it's... Uh, do you I'm, write together, though? No, no, it's all me. But, but, uh, but you, like, you trust them enough to, like, handle your, your babies, yeah, just, your songs. I tell them, they, you know, they can do whatever they want. Because it's supposed to be fun up there. That's one of the things I think it's kind of like, you know, it's a rock. Usually at, like, a stinky club or something. It's not an art gallery. So, like, you know, it's supposed to be a fun time for us and for the kids in the crowd. So I think it's, you know. It's what makes it organic. Exactly, yeah. That's awesome. It's great to hear. Grain fed. You want to do some rapid fire questions here? Let's go as fast as possible. Okay. You do this shit? Yes. Let's do it. All right. If you could be in any band, what band would it be, dead or alive? Uh, Metallica. No, no shit, really? Uh, yeah, I think that'd be okay. Sweet, dude. What, what are you doing vocals? Or are you, you on Lars's kit? Or um, are you just like with them? I'd be probably doing Kirk's job. That's sick. Kurt, Kurt, could you imagine Kurt, Mac DeMarco Kurt, playing Kurt's job? Yeah, Kirk Kurt, Hammett. Kirk Hammett. Is it Kirk? Kurt. It's Kirk. Yeah, Kirk. Kirk Hammett, lead guitar. Yeah. Mac DeMarco, lead guitar for, uh, for Metallica. I'd start yeah. buying Metallica records again. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. No problem. <laughs> What's your guilty pleasure song? Uh, guilty pleasure song would have to be, um, um, I don't know, something by Coldplay. N yeah, no shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, uh, <laughs> Hot Jambalaya. Maybe Yellow, I guess, or maybe The Scientist or something. So catchy. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> what about your guilty pleasure moving? Movie. M movie. Uh, guilty pleasure movie. Um, um, uh, oh, man. Uh, ooh. Uh, ooh. 
uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2, probably. I've seen it like 50 times now. Damn, all right. I, haven't I don't seen know if that's one. even a guilty book, but I like cry when I watch it. It's beautiful. You cried when you watched Spider-Man 2? First time I saw it, I was like, oh, my God. Like, yeah, it's like really serious. It's like it really like hits at home. That's why uh, yeah. Emma Stone's still in that one. Yeah, she she dies at the end. Sorry if I ruined Shit, it. Shit, I haven't seen it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but the <laughs> way that Spi- just the, the connection between Spider-Man and the, and the well, what's the actor's name? Jamie Foxx. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Spider Man loves the people, man. He's out in the streets of New York for the people. That's just what like he's about. just like Mac, dude. Yeah, fuck yeah. Just yeah. like Mac. I love Spider Man. What do you I like think. better, recording or touring? Two what? different things, I think. Well, well, they're completely different things. Yeah. But how do you feel about each? Like, I like them both. Is there one you hold higher in your heart, or not really? I think they're good for different reasons. It's kind of like touring is is really fun because you're meeting people all the time, having a party, having a good time. Sometimes the time is not so good, but hopefully that doesn't happen that much. Um, and I feel like, you know, I like to do it, so we do it for a long time. It's great. But uh, recording is like, you know, because I'm all alone. I don't even like hanging out with anybody when I'm recording. So it's kind of like different headspace. You know? It's like that solitude. You get to be like in tune with you. You get to be like Buddha man for a while or whatever. It's like, you know, like, mm, you know, kind of a, it's, uh, it's interesting for, you know, I think it's like you go completely insane when you're touring and then the cool off period is when you get to do another record. So. You get to hone yourself back in and yeah. like put something else out that means something. Yeah, hopefully. And then we go nuts and spread it around the world for a bit mm-hmm. and then repeat. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. What's the first album you ever bought? First album I ever bought? Um, I think it was probably the Blue Album by Weezer. Think. Uh, no way, man. I mean, I had gotten like uh, Kid Rock and Limp Bizkit CDs for a couple of years at that point. But then I remember going with like 20 bucks to the record store on, on the main strip of my hometown and bought. Yeah, I think it was the blue. Maybe it was the green album. How old was I? I don't know. But I think it, that was the first one I remember being like, well, I'm going to pay for this. <laughs> this is the one I'm putting my money in on. Yeah, yeah. Right on, dude. Uh, you're going to play another song. This one's a cover, right? Yeah. Uh, Angel Olsen. Yeah. This Tell is song why. Called- why. Tell us why first. I have my reasons. <laughs> I think a lot of people would like to know. Are you just going like, to let your voice speak for itself? That's right. <laughs> I think she might be tuned in, too, if you're out there, Angel. Hi. Uh, if you're not, then hi anyway. <laughs> and if I fuck this up, then I fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, let's hear it, man. Okay. Let's see. Here we go. If you don't feel good about it, then turn around. If you really mean it, baby, stand your ground. No one's gonna take it for you, darling, it's true. No one's gonna make it for you. If you feel like quitting now, then try a little harder. The things we need the most, they seem to take a little longer. No one's gonna try it for you, darling, it's true. Whoops. No one's gonna wait there with you. Just when you thought you would turn all your lights out, it shines. Here's Stu's guitar part. Oh, yeah. Some days all you need is one good thought strong in your mind. Once again, Stu. Don't believe me, you can go ahead and laugh. If you've got a sense of humor, you're not so bad. No one's gonna hear it the same as it said. No one's gonna listen to it straight from your head. If you feel like running out and stand in one place When you're still and when you run There's 
something to say No one's gonna see your life through There's no way I wouldn't want to know what you see every day If you don't feel good about it then turn around If you really mean it baby stand your ground No one's gonna take it for you darling it's true No one's gonna wait there with you Let's take the chorus again, why not? No one's gonna take it for you Darling, it's true No one's gonna wait there with you I know this part again Just when you thought you Turn all your lights out God, man, he's <laughs> I like fucking that song, awesome, man. Right? Hopefully she marries you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. Thanks a lot, Mac. We're going to go do one more song break, and we're going to get a little goodbye right after that. No problem. Let's go into some uh, piss jeans, yeah? Yeah. Let's do it. This is Pine of Cacophony. My name's Dan. Hello, my union station, Stephanie speaking. How may I help you? My name's Dan Petronello. This is uh, a Pine of Cacophony on Skid Row Studios, and Mac DeMarco's in front of me. Thank you for the beautiful performances. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. And thank you for taking the time to come in here after a busy weekend at FYF. My pleasure. That means so much to me. Just so people know, how do we follow you? Twitter? Uh, yeah, I think it's MSL DeMarco. MSL DeMarco. Thank you. Yeah. Your Facebook? Matt Facebook, DeMarco. yeah. I don't really check that one that much, but you can But I'm try. sure like the, the posts for your releases and your shows are on there. So yeah, you guys pretty too much do that now, right? Yeah. They're right always on. trying to sound like me in the posts, like, hello, my pepperonis or something. Like <laughs> they, they talk like that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. You got an Instagram, too? Is, is that I have an Mac Instagram, Mac, Mac DeMarco, yeah. That's where I just post really st stupid pictures of myself. Um, Perfect. I have an email. Look. My personal email is mdemarco at gmail.com. My mom is Agnes DeMarco on Facebook. What's um, your personal cell phone number? My personal cell phone number is 917-909-9186. How beautiful, man. 917. That's a New York City area code. <laughs> I appreciate you sharing that with the world. Yeah. So if you want to call it, like if you feel lonely out there, like I'm, I'm lonely a lot too. So just give me a call. Let's call Mac to Marco occasionally. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. We'd like to thank everybody that stopped by here listening to us at Skid Row Studios. Thank you so much, Mac, for stopping by and playing for us. It's no it's, problem. It's been a dream come true here. Um, we'd like to thank Skindy.com uh, for doing some work for us. And you can find a pick of the week by myself on that website. And um, we, we, heard you, we heard you were a fan. So we're going to close this evening out with Ryan Paris, La Dolce Vita yes. for you, brother. Yes. Hope you dig. I love it. All right. Good night, guys. Ciao.